I think the sig significant thing that's happened is just that uh, club sports and esports on campus has um, has partnered. All of our players are considered athletes in the eyes of the university. You know, maybe this is the start of you know the standard of gaming culture at Sunset State in the future. We've been officially recognized by the university. San Jose State University. Sergio's dream from San Jose State University. San Jose State! All of us and all of our staff and all of our players is, is, is made out of passion and, and love for the video games that we play. We've been approached by uh, Mr. Winston Adams about wanting to take in esports as a club sport. It was just a challenge to seek out the administration and see were they interested? Do they know who we are? Do they know what esports is? They were reading about esports and how great it is for our campuses. So definitely that word's getting around um, rapidly. The community is awesome and it's the campus's main outlet for all those gamers that want to come out. Talk openly about their interests and maybe get together, find people to play with, and just make a lot of friends. It really brings out the competitive side of me for sure. And literally pay for like college through playing video games. And I'm happy that our organization is founded on passion and pride to make uh, esports and gaming the best it can be in the collegiate side. Especially if it's fully student ran, um, leadership always changes. And with that, with that leadership change, always comes a different culture. Our main focus was just getting people to come and show up and play games and hang out and just have a good time. The thought of kind of getting teams together and getting people to just, you know, competitively play like League or Counter-Strike was, was something that we didn't really focus on too much. Our structure involves having two different clubs for the community side and the esports side of things in San Jose State. So I had somebody uh, a couple years ago um, reach out to me to look into to coming on um, as part of club sports. Being, being kind of strapped on funding, that was kind of why I didn't really take them on um, then. Uh, you know, kind of like our first step into getting into the university was through club sports. Our uh, funding got a lot better uh, within a year. We, we tripled funding. So when, um, when I got another kind of that summer email of like, hey, we want to be a part of club sports, I think this is where we fit, There's, that was the only reason. If you kind of look at the, um, the dynamics of what the teams are doing, um, it, it falls in with everything else that our, club, that our other club teams are doing. And it's been, it's been cool to kind of like see people see esports in a different light. As of now, the community side is the Spartan Star League. That club used to hold our esports um, teams until very recently when we established esports at San Jose State. We, we had our people that showed up to our meetings and that was our community. And then we had our, our esports teams, which were mostly online. You know, I think it's definitely less of a less of a friend community thing now, and it's more like a it's business time. Where esports can grow is, is in club sports. I mean, it's a perfect space for it. And I, th I think it'll thrive in that way. It can become a, uh, a flagship of club sports in general. I'm the co-founder of uh, SJSU Esports, also known as Spartan Star League on campus. Uh, Sergio's dream, original StarCraft II player, and then uh, was the coach of the League of Legends team, I think through some of our best years of San Jose State. But I am uh, the godfather of it all here. Me, Tyrell, Kevin Tyrell, and um, Alan Chen, we started the club together. I figured I would start the StarCraft II team here. The club changed a lot. Uh, it grew from uh, StarCraft II League uh, only into being about any eSport, into being about not only just eSports, but kind of gaming in general to have uh, those students feel like they have a place to go to and people to talk to and to try to get San Jose State to be a premier team. I mean, we did uh, have very good finishes in League of Legends. We were second place. We very nearly beat uh, Washington for uh, the first Riot Collegiate Series. Hello and welcome everyone to the 2014 North American Collegiate Championship. More than 500 teams from colleges across the continent started the journey towards tonight's finals. And after hundreds of games, there are only two left standing. The first ever North American Collegiate Championship match between Sergio's Dream from San Jose State University and the Blue Caster Minions from Washington. And it's going to be the nexus for game one here in the North American Collegiate Championship. Game one goes to SGD.
47 kills. And it looks like they keep going for the fight. Larktran's gonna go down. The next is falling, means game over. We're going to a game three. 34 minutes into the game, the inhibitor is now gonna fall. 40 minute death timers could be BCM, the best team at a college. Blue Caster minions of the University of Washington coming out as the North American Collegiate Champions. After we had lost, the, the took second place in the Riot Collegiate Series, uh, David kind of, David Pham, RGZ Slash, uh, sort of lashed out. And that sort of started the rift between me, him, Locke, and, and our uh, Locke Tran, where they wanted more from the organization um, and they didn't understand why the organization would always take a cut of purse. You know, it got into a really bad argument with me, Locke, and, and David uh, over Skype. And after that, I said, fine, then I'm out. Uh, I just remember like how good it felt winning the first game and then you know just being on the stage and having Riot treat us like pros even though you know we were collegiate players. I was the jungler at San Jose State University. We got second place my freshman year in the North American Collegiate Championship. Making it to the finals is confirming our beliefs because we thought we are one of the strongest teams here. Getting second place, that was like one of the saddest moments of my life, honestly. Like, I, I, I cried on stage. Our manager at the time wanted to take a cut of our prize winnings. Lock Tran, I think on behest of his brother, sort of called me up and we had a team meeting in the summer after the loss. Unfortunately, there was a situation where we only had one sub designated for our team and you were supposed to have two. And he said that he double checked the rules and that the prize would be distributed between the six instead of the seven. He wanted to to talk about not paying the 10%. And he didn't put himself on the roster when he could have, and we lost a share of the prize. So it's about like $5,500 or something around that line. You should just think of it as the coach's cut in a sense. And it's a much smaller share than every one of your individual shares. And I think that, you know, like the 5% was kind of agreed upon, but not said that, you know, it's on doing your job properly. And I put all my time is free all the time. I spend making sure you guys don't get disqualified. And if you're gonna lose us like a seventh of the, the, the prize, I don't think he's really entitled to getting 5% of the whole thing. And so that caused a lot of drama. And if we take some money from when you win now, maybe next year another team is the team that pays for you. When I first asked him what the money was going for, he said like it funds the pizza at the meetings, it funds like lost ethernet cables. And this keeps us functional and, and moving on. Like how much pizza are you buying? It was having to sell people on a vision and people just don't buy into their vision. They have their own idea of what they're going to get from competing. Communication is just key. I mean, I wouldn't have gotten as mad. I'm sure the rest of the team wouldn't have. Uh, when we didn't sense that he was just making up things that he would spend the money on. And I told him, well, you know, if you don't want to pay, then I'm not going to be here anymore. And it caused a lot of club drama. Uh, we had like a presidency shift after that. And I dismantled everything I was working on. I told the student union, never mind. Uh, nobody was really going to take over it after I left. So I sort of killed all those projects and walked away. Well, we had like if officers change, presidents change, and we had a president who understood the team struggles and what happens. Yeah, so the Sergio thing was a meme the whole time I was there. Players started, you know, showing up to meetings more because they felt like they were welcome again. I mean, basically nobody, nobody ever really heard about it, and like I said, it was just a meme the whole time I was there. So nothing really happened. It just was. It was like a community again instead of uh, being split up between the players and the club. So for the future of collegiate esports, I would like to see it keep growing. Um, I think collegiate esports is a very up and coming thing. I think we need a new genre or something new and exciting into, into the esports scene. Collegiate esports is a really good way to recognize new talent. Universities will start offering scholarships for students. A 
Alumni Association for the former esports team and, and Spartan Star League. We've had countless alumni interest in supporting um, an esports program here, but there's nothing official. So you know, I have money now. I can I can I can give them a couple hundred bucks a year or something like that. And, help them get by. They'll be totally willing to kind of support the, the school in that sense. I'm, I'm currently working on um, trying to get some square footage uh, mapped out. All right, any other competitive organization, they need places to store equipment. They need places, uh, right, they need resources. Actually having a home base on campus uh, where it's obvious this is where um, eSports on campus resides. I truly want this program to become something along the lines of the varsity programs that are out there in the nation. But I also like, don't want to you know, lose the sense of community that I kind of felt here. Providing more opportunities for student engagement, uh, comp competition, whether it be like intercollegiate. Just like more support for students in general, I feel like this is a great opportunity for that. It's really important for management to not be stubborn and try to force one way and to actually be able to like, you know, change, change lanes, so to speak, uh, if something's not working out or if the players actively have something against it. I'm happy they, they uh, made positive changes. Myself and everybody affiliated with uh, eSports at San Jose State is serious with this endeavor. I, you know, I, I truly believe that San Jose State, you know, will, will, will be a, you know, one of the leading powers in, in gaming eSports. We all have the heart and the passion. We just gotta push right through, um, get this work done, think long term, and let's just see what happens.